question, and then we're going to get back to our groups about witnessing before 10 o'clock. We have our other meeting at 10 with the leaders. But the last, the last question, if you can see it here before you, uh, which is our seventh question and last question. We've got all seven now listed. If you do not have any one of these questions, let me know. I can get you a copy. I just made a few copies of every one of them. So whichever one you're missing, if you need one after uh, this morning, let me know because I got some copies in the back. Whatever question that you need because you want all these questions in your collection. So make sure you have every last question and you can keep going over the questions. So, the last question that we're going to go over when it talks about evangelism and then starting next week, we're going to get back into just um, the final two lessons on presenting because we're, we'll be done with the questions today and then we'll just go straight into the pre presentation of the gospel two more times and we'll be done with evangelism. Then we just got to set up a day where we're going to go out, we will probably at least one time in August that we'll go out and witness. So we're going to next, we'll use the next two weeks to finish up the evangelism. Then we'll go back into, because we got to finish up the book of Joshua. We was almost done before we got into all these other things. So we'll go after we finish the two weeks of evangelism, we'll finish the book of Joshua, which I think we have four chapters left in there. Then we're going to move to the next book, the Joshua, which is Judges. We're going to Judges after that. So that's the process for our Sunday school that we're going to go through, just wanted to let you know where we're going from there. So we only got two more weeks left for the evangelism class. So question number seven, uh, want, a good, want a good moral life get me into heaven? Looking at the seven questions all together, what about those who never have hear about Jesus? Question number two, is Christ the only way to God? Three, why do innocent people suffer? Four, how can miracles be possible? Five, isn't the Bible full of errors? Six, isn't the Christian experience only psychological? And last question, won't a good moral life get me into heaven? So what do you say about that? If somebody uh, tell you that while you witness it to them, they say, well, what? if I'm just good enough, won't God just let me in if I'm just good? What would you tell them? No, what would they have to do? No, not, not what they have to do. Why? How come their moral behavior is not good enough? How come you, just because they don't cuss, you know, I don't cuss, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do all that. Look, I take care of my kids, put them through college, pay my mortgage, pay my taxes. You mean to tell me, God, just because I don't go to church, God not going to let me in? Is that the reason why they go to hell? Because they don't go to church? They have to accept Christ. So the answer to them is, no, your moral behavior has nothing to do with uh, you accepting Christ as your Savior. Because you have a lot of people who don't know Christ who live moral, good lives. Plenty of them. They are philanthropists. They give money to the poor. They have a lot of charities. and They do a whole lot of stuff with the community. And they don't know Jesus as their Savior. And you would think that they know by all the good deeds that they're doing, but your good deeds is not what guarantees you into the kingdom of heaven. We do good deeds not to get into heaven, but we do good deeds, what? why? Because we, we are on our way to heaven. And we do good deeds not to get points with God. No, nope. we do good deeds because this is our ministry. That's what we're supposed to do. You don't do it because uh, somehow God is going to look at you that way. So yes, Somehow we got to get people to understand that their lifestyle, the way they live, if they think they're living a good lifestyle, that that lifestyle is not good enough. So how can we do that? So let's read what he says here. Uh, so this question, question number seven, is a variation of question number two. <clears throat> question number two, is Christ the only way to God? Ah, so it's almost some, on the same point of that question. That if you're a basically good person, things will be all right for you in the end. Of course, most people assume that they are basically good. The important question is, what standard or measuring rod are you using to determine whether or not you are good? See, that, that's the point. So some people are using the measuring rod and the standard that they're using is their behavior. But what measuring rod or standard should they use? The Bible. <laughs> that's 
the standard. That's your measuring rod, is the Word of God. It doesn't, we, look, we got, like I said, you got people who give millions of dollars to charity. Uh, doesn't mean they're going to make it to the kingdom of God. You got people who feed the hungry every day. I mean, literally, go to the soup kitchen, uh, take their time out of the day to go serve food to the homeless. You got people who go buy the Vinox and help people, homeless people, all the time, but don't mean they say. That's what we got to really understand about that. Somebody took this, I'm sorry, it's going to burn. Y'all smell it? I didn't do it. So check that out. Okay, anyway, if you want to measure someone or something, you need some kind of standard against which to compare the object. Right? So if they talk about God won't let me in just because I'm good, what are they measuring that on? What are they looking at? What, what are they looking at? Uh, uh, for instance, if you want to know what an inch is, there needs to be a ruler somewhere that is the standard for a foot or yard, which is divided into inches. If you want to know how far a town is from your town, you need some kind of measurement standard, say miles or kilometers, etc. Similarly, if you want to know if you're good or not, you need a standard of goodness to measure yourself against. That saying, nobody's perfect, right? Because we already read in Romans 3, 24, there is none righteous, no, not one. So they can't use that as a measuring stick because there is nobody that's righteous. So if they looked at the Bible, if these people looked at the Bible and read the Bible, they could see that we don't measure up at all. Our goodness don't measure up at all. And as far as uh, I think Isaiah said it this way, say all of your righteousness, your goodness is as filthy rags. Isaiah 64 and 4. 64, 4 through 6. That's what it says about our goodness. So if my goodness, so now I'll throw this question at you, because this is what they're going to throw at you. If my goodness is not good enough, I mean, I thought I was a pretty good person. I don't hurt nobody. I've never been to jail. I've never been arrested. I never did anything wrong. I you mean tell me that's not good enough? So now my, my question to you is, Mr. Evangelist, Miss Evangelist, then what do I do? How am I going to get to heaven then? Huh? Just confess. All I gotta do is just say. Okay. So, uh, two people just said two things. You said to confess and believe. Uh, 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 Sister Karen has added two more things, which is basically four things: confess, believe, repent. Now, here's the fourth thing she brought out: you gotta live it. You gotta live it. Because see, I can confess, believe, and repent. But how do you know I confess, believe, and repent? Mm -hmm. By the way I live. Because I said, yeah, I'm gonna do what Sister Bear told me. I'm gonna go ahead and confess, believe, and repent. Hey, brother, we ain't seen you in church in 10 weeks. <laughs> I was watching a football game. I don't know what you're talking about. See what I'm saying? So you can confess and believe and repent all you want to, but if, as James says, uh, <laughs> Faith without works is dead. Right? That's what James said. So we didn't make that up either. So people, we, uh, John MacArthur calls it easy believism, where people will try to say all you need to do to get to heaven is just confess and repent. But what does repent mean? Repent means to change. That's what it means to go the, uh, the, the opposite direction. So if you haven't gone the opposite direction, you haven't repented. You have not. Your lifestyle has changed. You haven't repented. That's my key indication if you have repented or not. So you can tell me all day long you love the Lord. But if you're not living for the Lord, how do I know that you really love the Lord? He in my heart. He, he in my heart. If he's in your heart, then you do what he tells you to do. I, I just can't get it. It's amazing. Uh, a lot of people talk about the custom, the uh, word faith preachers. They have some good examples of faith. Because you know that's what they, their main thing is faith. And I told you, I, I'm kind of leery of putting everybody, or calling people that they're going to hell because they believe in certain teachings. I just say that that particular teaching is wrong. But there's some great uh, teachings on faith that they do have that are connected to the Bible. Here's one of them. If a person walks up, they use an example of somebody walking in the desert, and they are 
uh, they're starving, they haven't eaten in almost four days, they're about to die, and they run up to a table that has a lot of food. It has water, it has food there, and they would say to that, and they get up to the table and say, if I eat the food off this table, I will live. And they keep just saying, if I just eat, if I just take one more of food, they ain't touched the food yet. If I just eat this food, <laughs> that's right before me on this table, I will live. But if they keep saying it and don't do it, what's going to happen to them? They're going to die. So the, the food is there. So that's what faith is. You can't just say you have faith. You got to live out your faith. So we need to tell that person that says, isn't my life good enough? Isn't my moral standards good enough? I said, no, it's not. You're being good is, is good. That's great. We want you to be good, but that is not the measuring standard that we use. Or that's not what God uses to allow you to get into heaven. So let's go a little further. You were telling me I need to confess, repent, uh, believe in my heart, and live the life. Okay, so how do I repent and how do I confess? What scripture would tell me how to do that? Because now you got it. You got it. Okay, I, I, I want to repent and I want to confess. Where, where, where would you take me next? I need to see some scriptures now. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's Romans 10, 9 and 10. And you can do Romans uh, 6, 23. 6.23. For all have sinned. No, Which one? Wages. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal, is eternal life, life. Through, Christ through Christ Jesus. That's another good one. You can take them to Romans 10, 13. So that's why I got that real quick. Romans 3, 23. Romans 3, 23 says. For all have sinned. Right. Go to Romans 10, 13. 10, 13. What does it say? <laughs> I, thought you was already, I thought you was already in Romans 10. <laughs> I think all this is this. For all call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs> I think that's the 13th verse. Maybe if somebody correct me, look at your Bibles, Romans 10. That's what it says. For all that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the 13th verse. I told you, you can stay in the book of Romans just by that one book by itself and lead somebody to Christ. Just in the book of Romans by itself. We call that the Romans row. So now you got me. I understand now that my moral behavior it's not good enough that I need to, uh, I need somebody else whose standard is greater than mine, and we know that that person is Jesus Christ. So really, I'm not getting, getting into heaven based on my goodness, I'm getting into heaven based on His goodness. He's letting me into heaven because of what He has done, not because of what I have done. So you have done a great job, now I've accepted Christ into my life because you explained to me that my behavior is not good. It just won't ever be good enough. Because am I ever going to be perfect down here? No. So if I'm never going to be perfect down here, then my behavior would never be good enough. Because even as a Christian, I'm going to make some mistakes, right? Even as we live this life, we're going to make some mistakes. So our behavior would never ever get to the point where uh, some people want God to outweigh their good from their bad. It'll never get to that point. You might not, you might as well say, no, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and rely on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to wear his righteousness all the way into heaven. That's what we have to do. So that's good. Any questions about that question there? Because we, are, we can get into, uh, once again, our group real quick before it's 10 o'clock. I don't know what time it is now. If we don't have any questions, uh, just one time. Huh? Oh, it's 954. So any questions about them? Now, as I said, if you don't have any one of these questions, how many of you want the other questions? I did print out some. So if you're missing some, just raise your hand, let me know. And then at the end of uh, Sunday School, we will go ahead and give you those copies. So next week, we're going to, for the next two Sundays, all we're going to do is we're going to practice. We're going to go through one more lesson of evangelism, and then we're just going to practice uh, 
amongst each other for two more Sundays and we'll be done with evangelism. We're going to go back into the book of Joshua because we have four more chapters to finish there. Once we finish Joshua, we're going to go into the book of Judges. Okay? So then we're going to set up a day in August where we could go out and evangelize around here. Okay? It'd be great. Oh, and if you didn't give your name to Sister Perkins for your t-shirt, uh, because the t-shirts are $8.00. These are all of you who are who've been coming to Sunday school. You get that shirt because it's going to be it's called the Evangelistic Team shirt. It's a gold shirt with blue lettering. We do, we do, everybody in church don't get what it is. Uh -uh. It's just the Evangelistic Team because you guys been here coming to Sunday school and you're going to be out there helping me witness because we're going to go out three by three, four by four, however wherever we can divide it up, but we won't go out by ourselves. I at least want three people in the group to stay with each other as we go up down the streets witnessing the people um, as we want three people at a time to go. Okay, so that'd be great. So any other questions or comments about evangelism? We've got just two more weeks left. All right, let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for being in your presence. Thank you for your love, your joy, and your peace. Thank you for allowing us to understand today that our moral behavior is not good enough and that we need Jesus righteousness to make it into the kingdom. So Heavenly Father, Lord, we do realize that. Allow us to be able to explain that to somebody who is lost. And Heavenly Father, allow us to continue to study how to be a good evangelist. In Jesus' name, amen.